welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a q a about questions that you guys had as far as like being a military spouse military wife assumptions on being a military wife if you don't know by now i am a military wife my husband is active duty air force he has been serving for uh eight years going on nine it'll be nine years in september uh, yeah, so I believe that I have uh, quite some knowledge about being a military wife and um, experience as well. I got married at the age of 19 to my husband and we PCS'd like very shortly after to Washington State. So yeah, I definitely do know um through my experience about being a military wife so i did ask on instagram and i did ask on my facebook for you guys to go ahead and send in some questions that you had that you wanted answers or assumptions or whatever so i did write down a few of them there was actually a couple that i had but i was like this is going to be a very long Q&A if I answer all of them. So I did grab um, questions that were like repeated in some way or form. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So the first question I had was, are you ready for hubby to retire from the military? So actually... I am ready for my husband to retire from the military when the time comes. Right now, he's been in the military for eight years, going on nine, so he has 11 years left to retire. But I think he's going to try to go past the 20. So, um, am, I, am, am I ready for him to retire? Yes, I am when the time comes. Right now, we're just enjoying enjoying it day by day taking it you know as it comes our way so yeah i i want him to retire yes uh at this point it's like you might as you know we've already spoken about this and our view on it is he's been in for nine years already or about to be nine you might as well push through it you know and finish in the long run by the time my husband retires he'll be 30 i think like 38 or 39 years old so he'll definitely be young still and have a full retirement and he could still work in a civilian life you know so yeah that is my uh response to that question the next question i had was if i can go anywhere where would i go so Okay, so let me start off by saying that this is my first PCS. Like, we have been stationed in what? If I, once I say this, you guys are going to be like, are you serious? Like, it's, it's crazy how long I've been stationed here. But this is my first duty station. So we have been stationed in Washington State for eight years eight years um yeah crazy i know uh he got washington right off the bat right after finishing tech school it's actually very funny because when he had got orders to washington state i was his girlfriend at the time i wasn't his fiance or anything i was still his girlfriend um so then he calls me and he's like so babe i got orders and i was like oh where'd you get orders to because at this point like we were still boyfriend and girlfriend but like i already knew that like i wanted to marry him and i wanted to build a life with him and he was going to be my husband so you know we were just planning for the future so of course fyi if you're a military girlfriend out there and you want to go with your significant other to their next duty station you have to be married like they're not going to include you in his orders if you're not his spouse so that obviously came later down the road where like he 
you know, obviously he proposed to me and then uh, we got married and that's how I was able to get on the orders so I can go with. So anyways, he calls me and he's like, I got orders to Washington. So I literally was in the car with my mom and I was like, oh, Washington, Washington, D.C. That's not far from Florida because mind you, I'm from Florida. So I was like, oh, that's that's cool. That's awesome. That's like, it's not that far. And then he's like, no, babe, Washington State. So I was like, Washington State. There's a there's a state, a Washington State. So I literally grab my phone and I Google map Washington State, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me! Like, I'm from Florida, Washington State is complete opposite side, like 3,000 miles away. So when he told me that, I was like. Oh my god, Washington State. And my brother was like, oh, that's where Twilight was filmed. You're gonna be in Twilight. Like, so yeah, for those of you who don't know, like the movie Twilight was filmed in Washington, Forks, Washington, actually. And I live like three and a half to four hours away from Forks, which by the way, I've never been. I would love to still go. Before I leave Washington State, I would love to take a trip to Forks, Washington, just to like take pictures of the Bella House and all that stuff. But anyways, off topic. So, back on track. Wow, I really went, I really went way off. So the question was, if I can go anywhere, where would I go? So being that I've been in Washington State for so long, I am ready to PCS. Like, I want orders, like, tomorrow. Like, I really, really, really am so ready for, like, a whole new chapter in my life, a whole new adventure, a whole new experience. Um, for the longest time ever, Every time I got asked, like, where do you want to go next? Where do you want to go next? If you get orders, where would you guys like to go? I always said Florida because my husband is Air Force. So there are Air Force bases in Florida that he qualifies for according to his job. So I always was like, oh, Florida. for Like, if we get orders, I would love to go to Florida. Florida, Florida, Florida. But now in, um, you know, the space and the mindset that I have right now, it's kind of like if I can choose anywhere, anywhere, that the military obviously could allow us to go i would totally choose hawaii like i would love 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 to get orders to hawaii or guam or japan like i would love to experience an overseas so like to answer the question in general i would love an overseas experience just because realistically speaking like when am i ever if it's not through the military life when am i ever gonna up and pick up my kids and my family and we're just gonna be like let's go live in hawaii for four or five years or let's go to germany or japan like it's not really a realistic thing for us if it isn't because we're in the military you know so if i could take advantage in that aspect my kids are so young like very little so i would love an overseas experience the next question I got was, how is it having a new addition to the family when you're living in the military lifestyle, going through everything alone when there's no family around? <sighs> okay, so I will say that it's an adjustment. It's a huge, huge adjustment. Like I have been in, in this state for so long without no family at all because i have no family here like we just have friends that we've made throughout the years who have pcs and have gone so that's one tough thing about being in the military is like realizing that you're gonna make friends along the way and some of those friends will become lifetime friends so no matter where they go you guys still keep in contact you still keep a good connection with them and that friendship will always be there and some of these friendship convert into family like pretty much it's like your family is far from you so you build these friendships and you make them 
you know the connection becomes so strong to where now you guys are like okay we depend on each other like family like that's just how the military lifestyle is at least for me it's like i have met really 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 good people in my life who i consider family till this day so you know you get you get support from them in a way but at the end of the day, like, it's still very, very hard because you're you're far from family. At least for me, I'm a very family-oriented person. So, orient, family-orientated person? That's how you say it? So, in the very beginning, it was so hard for me. Like, I, I went into full blast depression moving into Washington. The first two years here for me were hell. Like horrible horrible and then i got pregnant um like a year after being in washington with my first daughter it was pretty bad like my my i had really 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 bad like postpartum depression with her because i was i found myself all alone like my mom was away from me family like we it just became really hard but you adapt and overcome so um now being a third time mom it's actually not as bad as being a first time mom and being away from home for the first time like now i have adapted and overcame the reality and the fact that this is my life i'm a military wife and i no longer get to have family so close to me like that some people are lucky and they get based really close to family and stuff i just haven't been lucky enough to be that close to family so i've made what it would I've made it is what it is like I've made the best out of my situation so um it does get hard though like as far as when deployments come around or like TDYs and stuff it does get very hard especially um when you're when you just feel alone you know you have you feel like you have nobody there to help it does get very very overwhelming but it's not something that you definitely can't handle um so that's my view on it it's it's definitely a mission but it is something that you can overcome okay the next one was most people assume that the military life is convenient but what do you miss the most about the civilian life and not being restricted to the military life? So, most people do assume that the military life is convenient. Um, I don't, f in a way, I don't even know how to, okay, so the military life is convenient in a way of being able to travel because some people do get lucky enough to where they get to travel more than others like for example me I've been stuck in the same place for a long time so I haven't really been able to experience that part of uh, the military life where you get to PCS every so often but at the same time what I miss about the civilian the civilian lifestyle is not feeling like for example, like right now, we had vacation plans to go home to Florida for vacation. In the civilian world, we just make our plans, we make the vacation, and we go. You know, like we take leave off of work, and we go. In the, in the military world, it's like, it's completely different. Like, if we want to take vacation, my husband has to put in for leave. That has to be approved. If it's not approved, then we can't go anywhere. And with this whole, like, COVID-19 thing right now, that's our current situation. Like, we haven't been able to fully get approved for our leave. So, our vacation is kind of, like, up in the air, whether we're going or not going. So, that's one thing I do miss about the civilian lifestyle is, like, not having to like get permission for certain things you know so that's that's one thing i do miss about the civilian life um next question was why are so many high-ranking wives so crazy about their spouse's rank and who they become friends with so i have actually come across 
a couple people who are like this i am not i am not like this at all like i am a very social person and i love to make friends and be social with different type of people so that's not the vibe you'll ever get from me but there are certain spouses that i have come across where their husband is like an officer or their husband is like a e e8 or like a e7 and they just feel entitled because their husband is high ranking and i get it like we we as a military military spouse we are um we're a representation of our husband so like wherever we go how we act how we behave all that reflects on them whether you th whether you think or not it really does reflect on our husbands because um i got interrupted by the sirens popo um but anyways how we act reflects on them. Damn, that's really loud. Sorry, my window's open because it's hot in Washington. Okay, so how we act reflects on them. So I get that, but at the same time, I there is... Let me just cut to the chase. There's a lot of wives and spouses who think that because their husband is high ranking that they feel entitled and they're like high ranking too. But I don't know why some women feel like that because that shouldn't be the case. Like you are allowed to be able to hang out with whoever you want. It doesn't matter if your husband's an officer or not an officer, low ranking, high ranking. But you will come across these type of people and it is what it is brush it off don't let it phase you and keep it pushing um yeah that is my answer to that question to that assumption there definitely is those types of spouses in this military world but i think it's just because they just feel entitled that's what it is they feel entitled the next question is um preparing to pcs what are things the spouses can do to help the process um the process of moving smoothly such as packing or any other kind of help so i think as a spouse to help like your significant other in the process of PCSing would be to like maybe organize through your house, figure out things you guys don't need, get rid of them, minimize minimize the stuff that you do need to PCS. Um, but when you're like getting ready to PCS, the military will come. Like they'll they'll hire like a moving company that'll come to your house and they'll pack everything up for you and they will move it to your next duty station. So that is a plus because moving is not fun. Packing everything up yourself is not fun. Um, unless you choose to do like a full daily move, then you're responsible for packing your own stuff and moving it, which some people do take that route because you get reimbursed. Like you can get reimbursed more that way versus the military like moving you and stuff but it is it is a huge hassle so um yeah things i feel like you can do to help the process go smoother is just um like i said organizing your things getting rid of things you you don't really need for the next move um staying calm and not stressing because that plays a big role in the whole moving process take it day by day pretty much the next question that i have is or assumption is people always feel that because you're military you make so much money that's very very funny and so true like people always think that because you're military you are like 
filled with money like that is not true that is not that is not the case sis that's not true that is not true it's true to a certain extent depending on on your rank your time of service how long you've been in the military that could play a role like because obviously if you're an officer you are making more money than an uh, somebody who's enlisted you know and it also depends how long you've been in the military so every year or every so often you'll get like a raise depending on the time of service that you have and all that so in a sense you can make money off being in the military but that's not in general in general that's not the case like just because you're military doesn't mean you have loads of money and you're like rich and that's what a lot of people i think that's a, that's a that's an assumption a lot of people have but it's not true let me just tell you that right now it's it's being in the military your pay like yeah it's good pay but you're not balling out here like you know what i mean like it's it is what it is that's that's just that's just the case um also being in the military like people think oh my god being in the military you get your housing paid for your utilities paid for your your um medical paid for no let me just put this like let me just let me just this is an example just plain example if you have a job right you get paid let's say you get paid like five thousand a month six thousand a month you are responsible to figure out what your bills are you know pay your bills your rent your or your mortgage or like your utilities all that stuff your um health insurance all that being in the military we do pay for insurance by the way we just it just gets taken out of the paycheck so we don't see it we don't see it like you know it's not like it's given to us and then oh this month i gotta pay insurance it's gonna get taken out no like it automatically gets taken out so we don't have to worry about it but we do pay for it for health care um housing same thing like we do pay for housing if you live on base the military then will keep your housing allowance because that's how you're gonna pay the house to live on base and the utilities to live on base now you do have the option of living off base and then you'll get your you'll get your housing allowance and then you do you know you find a place if you happen to find a place that's cheaper um than what they give you then that's where you can probably pocket the rest save it or do as you please with it but we do pay for our housing and we do pay for our utilities and our health care and all that just an fyi the next question is um or assumption a lot of military wives don't work okay i am a stay-at-home mom stay-at-home wife i don't currently work but that is why a lot of military wives don't work they either work from home which is still working or they're going to school for full time or they have kids and they choose not to work because daycare is expensive child care is expensive so you know you just weigh your options and right now my my best bet is to be a stay-at-home mom until all of my kids are in school then i will go and do my thing sis but for now this is what works for me and this is what works for my family and i'm blessed enough to have a husband who's holding it down so i can stay home with my kids people get married for benefits so this is true um that's definitely not the way to go about it but there are people who do get married just for the benefits, which I will say is a no. That's a no-go. Like, that's not good at all. No bueno. If you get caught, you're going to get in so much trouble. Um, but yeah, that, that does happen. People do get married for the benefit of... Because when, when you get married, you get, like, more BAH versus being single. Like, the BAH is more because now you have a dependent. But... 
or people get married um for the benefits as far as like if somebody is not a legal citizen then they choose to get married to become a legal citizen which that is very illegal so don't do that but yeah people do some people do happen to get married for the benefits but that's definitely not the way to go about it guys the last question or the last assumption was military men or spouse or spouses cheat a lot during deployments or tdy's um, and divorce rates are very high so <laughs> that is a very touchy subject um i feel like divorce rates are high in general not just in the military like yes they're high in the military but in general like in today's society i just feel like the divorce rate is high um and then military men or spouses cheat a lot during deployments or tdy's um that is very true honestly like it happens and i think it happens because for one they're probably <laughs> this is such a t this is such a touchy subject okay so for one their relationship isn't is not like their priority which is bad military men or spouse cheat a lot during deployment yeah it happens is it something that should happen no it definitely shouldn't happen um but some people just don't have the respect for one the respect for their spouse or two they don't know how to keep it in their pants or just wait like wait until you're with your back with your loved ones you know like it's really really not that hard guys it's really not that hard but some people either they get married really young in the military and then they happen to get deployed and they happen to start fighting while they're separated from each other and then things happen and things lead one one thing will lead to the other and it happens but it's something that shouldn't happen and i am i am not i'm not for it so like obviously cheating is bad guys and especially when your husband is away or your wife is away because sometimes it's the wife that's away on a deployment or the husband's away like be faithful don't don't do that like it's just it's not good but that is that is an assumption and it does happen a lot but it shouldn't happen it shouldn't so that's it guys those are all my assumptions that i had but that was it guys that was all the assumptions i had for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below what other type of videos you would love to see on my channel thank you so much for stopping by and until next time guys